amazing grip. Very nice, very nice. Our second speaker, Rob Torno. You could say Rob is a great Delaware cartoonist. That's like saying the Yugo is a great Yugoslavian car. <laughs> I have known Rob for quite a while now. <laughs> he is actually a great cartoonist of national renown. And not only does he have his own magazine punchline, but also it has been welcomed recently to being a premier cartoonist at the News Journal. Way to go, dude. Oh, Nicely you. done. He's very unusual in this world. He pisses off both sides of the political spectrum. So please welcome Rob Torno. So I wasn't as quite prepared as he is, so I'm going to have to look at him. Um, as a cartoonist, the question I'm often asked is where I come up with my ideas. And I stole these from a friend of mine, Jim Borgman. He's a brilliant editorial cartoonist. He draws zits. And he, you know, the cartoon ideas, I scour internet sites, I scour newspapers, I try and fill my head with as much useless knowledge as possible just to be able to find that just one tricky idea that I know is just out of my grasp at any given moment. Um, you know, I live in a studio pretty much my entire life, and I think that there's all these great ideas just out of my sight that, you know, I just need a glimpse of one that I can just put on paper and stop my editor from yelling at me. Um, you know, and contrary to popular opinion, we do not get ideas when we sleep. Um, I take enough naps to make sure that that's an informed judgment. Um, <laughs> one of the benefits of working at home. That's pretty good. Um, but, you know, throughout the course of the day or however my mind works, you know, there'll just be a couple of ideas that finally pop into my head. So I just have to shut off the phone and I have to wrangle them, and I have to just try and grab one or two and just milk it for all it's worth, you know, set it up there and just tickle out whatever kernel of humor I can. Um, and rarely I'm fortunate to have some kooky political cartoon, you know, providers, people that are just beyond the pale that give me great ideas. <laughs> I love Christine O'Donnell. <laughs> I mean, she is a godsend. I hope she runs every election. I hope she's on every reality show. Um, you know, bring me her crazy eyes any day. Um, so obviously she got into a bit of trouble from the start when Bill Maher aired her, I'm not a witch. Uh, you know, well, she said I'm not a witch. So I have her saying, oh, I'm not a witch. Look, it's Christine O'Donnell. The voters have a right to some answers. Poof. <laughs> She's also very unintelligent, I think, in her viewpoints in a lot of cases. If you hear her talk about the Constitution or evolution or pretty much anything else. <laughs> Your donation to Christino PAC, that's her political action committee, if you guys want to give her some dough, will help pay for me to spread my message from coast to coast. Money for plane tickets. What, she's too good for her broom now? <laughs> God, I wish she did Dancing with the Stars. I mean, I just think it would have been brilliant. Another guy I love who provides great materials, Michael Vick. I do a lot of sports cartoons. Uh, get out of Vick, Philly. You don't deserve to play here. You're a horrible human being, but once you start winning games, oh, he's a hero. He's a fine human being. Want to pet my puppy? <laughs> this sort of sums up how I feel. You know, I mean, I understand he paid his debt, and, you know, I don't besmirch him for earning a career, but it's still, it's still tough to root for him, especially when he wants a dog. <laughs> I mean, whoever he's paying for PR, he needs to can and get someone. <laughs> um, I also do sports cartoons on the Phillies, obviously, and right now they're suffering from a lot of injuries. Um, but they want to play as though it's not important. So I have Utley here in pieces with Charlie Manuel saying, what? He's okay. He just, he's just a little sore. Um, Brett Favre had his problems this year with his little cell phone. I don't know if you know what he took pictures of, but if you can infer from what I'm saying. This one just is my cartoon this week. The tsunami destroyed everything I owned. It's a tragedy. Well, speaking of tragedy, do you know there might not be any NFL games next season? 
<laughs> oh. Well, it's hard to be sympathetic towards knuckleheads with $10,000 earrings or owners with five yachts. Um, this cartoon is one of my... I get a lot of response from this one. Um, I did this one where they revealed her official portrait. She's another politician. This is another popular one. Uh, I can't believe they actually had to ban text messaging, that people actually do it enough that... I mean, it's insane to me. And this was my last one. I had to put this here because I think every 70-year-old in the state sent me a letter saying this cartoon was disrespectful to Mike Castle. I even had one guy cut it out of the paper, draw a suit on him, and write, Christine O'Donnell is the devil in the corner. <laughs> so, so that's it. All right. Very well. By the way, drawing a cartoon of Jack Markell can't be that easy. My God, you make it look simple. Nicely done, dude. Oh, thank you. Well, you look at it, you go, wow, that's Jack Markell. No one outside of Delaware knows what the hell he looks like, but we're all going, hey, that's Jack Markell. Very nice. <laughs>